Today's experimental math seminar of Rutgers University is, uh, the speaker is Oli Herskovici, who will speak, speak about combinatorics behind the degenerate Eulerian numbers. This is Oli. As usual, if you have any questions, please unmute yourself and Oli will be glad to answer them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. So, we will talk about uh, combinatorics uh, behind the uh, degenerate Eulerian numbers. So the, the Eulerian numbers are speaking about uh, permutations. So just to put us on the same page, let me uh, throw up um, a few definitions. So first of all, permutation of a length n is an ordering of the elements uh, of a set n. And uh, if we have a permutation of length n, we need a definition of ascent or descent. So ascent of a permutation pi is an index. Index k is an ascent if a element standing on a place k is smaller than elements standing on k plus one. And the descent is the index k the such that pi k is greater than pi k plus one. Other names uh, used for such a uh, definition instead of index, uh, sometimes uh, we can hear about a rise, which rise will be a pair of pi k, pi k plus one, or fall replacing the definition of descent. So again, fall is a pair pi k, pi k plus one. So for example, if we have permutation a uh, pi three, one, four, five, two, so we can see here that we have a decrease, a decrease, a increase, decrease. So we can say that our essence of pi that there are indices two and three, and distance of pi there are indices one and four. Uh, we can also define uh, something uh, called the ascending runs of permutations. So this uh, will be the uh, increasing su subsequence and descending runs, which is in uh, de decreasing subsequence. So we can see here in second run three, and the next run will be one, four, five, while descending runs will be three, one, and five, two. So we can see actually that the uh, runs uh, will be ending each time. For example, ascending runs will be ended by uh, a descent. And here for such permutation, for example, we will we see that the senior runs is ended by either either um, ascent or the last element of permutation, which can be shown that the last index actually is neither ascent or descent. So for any permutation of length n, we actually get that the number of ascents of permutations and number of descents of permutations is always uh, fixed and it's a uh, it counts to n minus one. So now, if we denote by a n of k a number of permutations of length n with exactly k essence, so those numbers a n of k are just Eulerian numbers. And if we have Eulerian numbers, we can construct the Eulerian polynomials, polynomial whose uh, coefficients are Eulerian numbers. So we can define Eulerian polynomials uh, by different generating functions. So for example, uh, we can uh, take this generating function. Here we can see the exponential function standing in the denominator and another, uh, another generating function can be uh, given in a straightforward to a n of t. So there are other generating functions, but we will use two of these. Sorry. Okay. So now, um, actually, uh, the same, pretty the same generating functions uh, have a different, not different appearances uh, today and in earlier times. So, for example, earlier considered the generating functions whose um, whose um, uh, exponential function were of kind 
u so u times t minus one here. And today we can see generating functions, uh, they are exponential in denominator is uh, multiplied by t. So those generating functions, if we will consider the polynomials and the numbers generated by them, we will see that Uh, here we can see numbers uh, 1, t, t, t plus 1, while on the left-hand side we can see actually the same polynomials multiplied by t. So from uh, analytically we can see the difference, combinatorially we can say that the polynomials on the right-hand side will enumerate the essence, while the polynomials on the left-hand side will enumerate the ascending advance. So we need uh, to, in order to generalize the Eulerian numbers, we need a few terms from few calculus. So first of all, we need a, a notation of Q integers. So the number n uh, indexed Q is a Q integer is if it's given by ratio one minus Q power n over one minus Q. And for integer n is just, a, can be presented as a sum of Q powers J. We need also the definition of Q ascending factorial. So Q ascending factorial denoted by X uh, Q uh, index K is just a product of K terms of the form one minus Q power J times X. We can see actually that uh, as Q approaches uh, one, Q integer J plus one will approach J plus one and Q ascending factorial will approach the power of one minus X. So now if we consider the uh, generating function for Eulerian polynomials and we will take this one with A and T over one minus T power N plus one, we can see here First of all, we see here the power of n plus one, uh, power n plus one of one minus t. And here we can see the power of an integer number. So we can just replace it by their uh, Q analogs. And they to obtain the gener uh, generalized version of Eulerian polynomials. So it was done by Carlitz in uh, 1954. And key can be, we can see here exactly the replacement of one minus t by q ascending factorial and the power of uh, j plus one by corresponding q uh, number. So now if we consider the q Eulerian polynomials produced by such gener uh, generating function, we can see here uh, polynomials in qt with integer coefficients and not just integer coefficients, integer positive coefficients. So once we can see positive integer coefficients, we uh, can actually ask the question about combinatorial meaning of, of, of uh, those numbers. And so let's consider, for example, polynomial A4. This is its uh, representation. And now, once we know that Eulerian polynomials and Eulerian numbers are related to uh, permutations, so we will look for a generalization among permutations. So we will take permutation uh, 4, 3, 2, 1. We can see here the distance of permutations at first, second, and the third places. And if we consider the sum of those distance just equals to six. So we can see here the term q to power of six, t to power of three, three distance, sum of distance equals six if we'll take another permutation. So here permutations of four, three, one, two, four, two, one, three, and three, two, one, four, all those permutations actually have the same distance. They have distance at the first and the second places. So we have two distance and the sum of those distance actually is uh, uh, three. So we can see here three permutations with uh, two distance and sum of distance, which equals three. So this uh, combinatorial interpretation uh, to Q Eulerian polynomials was provided by Carlitz in 1974, actually 20 years later from the introduction of those numbers. 
And the combinatorial speaking, we have uh, that the n t of u is just a sum over all permutations, t to the number of distance of permutations, and q to a major index of pi. A major index of pi is just a sum over all distance of permutation. So Carlet actually uh, studied a uh, many aspects of uh, Euler numbers and uh, analy analytical aspects and combinatorial aspects. So in 1974, together with Scoville, they pro provided another generalization of Euler numbers. So now, if you consider A and K as number of ascending runs of permutations, Okay, so it can be given by these uh, generating functions. So we can see here the similar generating function that we already saw. And uh, such numbers have a, a symmetry relation with a n k equals a n n minus k plus one. So if we define a with um, parameters r and s, so that it will be a r plus s plus one, a s plus one, we can see here from this symmetry relation that it will be just as a with indexed r, r plus s plus one, r plus one, which means we have actually a with parameters s r. Flip of parameters here. So such symmetrization uh, led to change of generating function. And here we can see generating function with two exponential functions in denominator and two exponential functions in denominator. And uh, let's denote it, uh, this function by f of x, y. Now with uh, a little change here in denominator, instead of a uh, denominator uh, factorial r plus s plus one in denominator, if we take factorial of uh, r plus s, we actually will see that uh, this generating function will be given by product one plus x times f of seven y. Uh, and the second factor, factor will be a one plus y f of x of y. So now this is a generating function. And now the generalization can be done by introducing two parameters, alpha and beta, which will be powers of these factors, alpha here and beta here. So the obvious properties of such um, new numbers will be that at the alpha beta equals one, we just obtain the numbers uh, A of Rs. And a symmetry relation leads to the fact that a, a with Rs alpha beta is just equals to A of Sr beta alpha. So flips here between Rs and flips between the uh, parameter alpha beta. And uh, these numbers satisfy a certain, re certain uh, recurrence relation. This is the this relation. And what we can see from this relation that these numbers that are actually polynomial in parameters alpha, beta, and from this recurrence relation, we can also state that the, these polynomials will have positive integer coefficients. Okay, since we uh, said positive integer coefficients, we are again going to combinatorial interpretation of those numbers. So once we generalized, once we generalized the, the Eulerian numbers, so let's generalize also the terms of rises, false, and maxima in permutations. To do the- Excuse me, Aurelie. So yes. far, everything is due to Carlis and Carlis and Scoville, right? Yes, yes. Thank you. This is so generalization of Carlis. Is coming out. Okay. Thank yeah. You. So in the in general, this combinatorial, this combinatorial interpretation actually built on the insertion of two kinds of virtual elements, zero and zero prime. So if we assume that alpha and beta 
will count the numbers of zeros and zero primes respectively. So we can start a construction of permutation from the initial step. And the initial step, we have permutation of length one, which contains just one. And on the left, we will have exactly alpha zeros. And on the right, we will have exactly beta zero primes. So now we can generalize the, the term of rise. So rise now will be a pair of consecutive elements, A, B, where A is smaller than B, and A may be equal to zero. False will be now a par pair of consecutive elements, A, B, with A greater than B, where B may be equal to zero prime. Finally, the maximum, the maximum is it will be a triple of elements A, B, C, consecutive elements where we will have a rise A, B and fall B, C. So constructing a, a following for permutations will be the construction will be a recursive construction, and the requirements uh, are on. Um, zeros and zero primes actually. We need to remain at least one zero on the left side and at least one zero prime on the right hand side. So here the initial permutation has one rise, one fall, and one maximum. Now it will take the permutation, uh, this permutation, we can see two zeros, which means alpha equal two, three zero primes, or a beta equal three. And now we can see four rises here to zero, from zero to two, two to three, zero, one, one, five, four rises. For example, zero prime six is not a rise because it's not allowed by construction. Now, speaking about the uh, number of falls, we have fall from five to four, from four to zero prime, and from zero from six to zero prime. Again, this is not a, a fall because zero is not allowed to be a part of fall. Finally, we have only one maximum here. This is a triple one, five, four. So we can, um, it can be constructed that uh, if we denote by P of R S alphabet, the number of uh, such alphabet sequences with R rises and S falls, then the, we can see because of positions of zero and zero primes on the left and right hand side, that the number of real elements will be actually given by R plus S minus one. And again, we, it, it was obtained that such numbers satisfy the following recurrence relation with boundary conditions R1 alpha beta equals just alpha to R minus one. And if we consider P of one S alpha beta, it will be beta to S minus one. So from uh, recursive relations, they, they, they concluded that uh, such numbers are just the numbers A of R, S, alpha, beta. So this is one of works which is um, actually very interesting in uh, terms that insertion um, something that originally does not belong to the permutation, but extending them with some virtual elements provided a new combinatorial interpretation here. But as I already say, uh, said, Carlitz uh, investigated many forms of Aurelian polynomials and numbers. So in 1956, he defined a degenerate exponential function as one plus lambda x power mu. So actually, on the, at the first side, we have a function with two parameters, but actually th those parameters are related with um, a 
this condition that lambda mu equals one. So we have actually just one parameter here. And then if you will take a degenerate, a, a, the genetic function for area numbers, which contains an exponential function and denominator and replace the exponential function by its degenerate, degenerate version, we will obtain a degenerate or area numbers. Here we can see them a and k of uh, a lambda. So by uh, extracting those um, degenerate Eulerian numbers, we can see here that it did a zero equals one, a one equals two, a two already have something here, lambda plus one, it's, it looks nice, but here we can see minus lambda plus one. And such minuses appear here and there in other degenerate Eulerian numbers. So from one side, on one hand, we have a positive, uh, uh, we have integer coefficients, but on another side, on another hand, we have uh, the fact that some of them are negative, which uh, is, uh, can be described as pretty unlikely for, um, and pretty unfortunate for combinatorial enumerative interpretation. However, we can see also that the number, the sum of those numbers, the coefficients, will always give us a n factorial. Here we can see one, one, lambda plus one, plus minus lambda plus one, we have here two. And at a three, we will just obtain one plus four plus one, six. I also observed that such numbers uh, also have a symmetry relation. So a, a index n and minus k plus one of lambda just equals to a and k of minus lambda. And here we can uh, see the recurrence relation, k plus one minus, this is the minus that um, is so unfortunate for this representation, minus a, n minus one lambda, and here we have uh, positive uh, numbers. An initial condition for these numbers, it, again, is the a0 of lambda equals one. In his work, uh, there he provided the definition of uh, this degenerate area numbers. Carl has wrote that uh, he intend, intends to study the combinatorial properties of such number, however, Combinatorial properties of degenerate area numbers were, um, was never studied. And now uh, I would like to describe the work that uh, I did uh, for generalization of permutations. So I like games, cards, dominoes, so we can see on cards and the domino that some of them are is symmetric and some of them are less symmetric. So for example, if you take two tiles of domino, three, three and one, six. So if we will rotate them by 180 degrees, the tile three, three will stay the same, exactly the same, while the tile one, six will be just a, upside down, six, one. So now, if we'll take a permutation, for example, three, one, four, five, two, and we'll present it like a tiles of domino, to a half of domino tiles. So we can see here this representation. And again, we will rotate them in plane by 180 degrees. So those permutations will remain the same. And if permutations remain the same, it means that all its properties, again, are exactly the same, what we already had. So in particular, we had number of essence and descents remain the same. And now we would like to change it. And the change can be done for example, by introduction, more tiles. So let's say we have also tile uh, like this. 
contains not just uh, dots, but also an arrow, upward arrow. So such tile, after a rotation by 100 degrees, will turn into two with downward arrow. So the idea is that uh, for um, each N, instead of tiles with N dots, we will have uh, three tiles. N dots, N uh, dots with upward arrows, and N, and N dots with downward arrows. So number of such permutations, instead of one factorial permutations, we will have a, a three and triple factorial, which is three, three to n n factorial permutations. And the question is now about essence of permutations. So let's go back to classic permutation. This is permutation that we already saw, and its essence we have here at two and uh, three essence of these permutations. So the question is, what exactly define, does define it, the essence in permutation? And how can we define essence in, in triple permutations? So the rule that uh, it was introduced is, um, that upward arrow tile will add an essence any time that is in, 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 uh, inserted into permutation. So to keep uh, essence and descents, once, we do, uh, once in classical permutation, we don't have an essence in the last position. So we will insert our upward arrow tile also only from the left of ex uh, from existing permutation tiles. And in the same uh, way, we will insert the tile with downward arrow on the left from the existing tile. Now I will represent the constructive re 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 reconstruction of permutation. It will be done recursively. So if we have permutation of length n minus one, we will construct the permutation of length n. So if we have a, an insertion now of tile uh, N at the first position, it just works exactly the same as it works in a regular permutation. It will not change the number, number of essence and permutation, but it, the essence themselves will be shifted by one to the right. If we insert the tile with N dots in at the last position, it will increase the number of essence by one and the, the index n minus one will be added to the set of essence. Insertion of the tile uh, with n dots in, in the middle of permutation is uh, uh, depending on the place. If index i is an essence of permutation pi, then the number of essence actually remains the same. And we have here a uh, essence before um, n, remains the same and essence uh, after uh, insertion of n are just um, shifted by one to, to the right. If i was a descent of permutation, then the insertion of n will increase the number of essence by one. And again, on the left, we have the same essence. We add the essence on the, at the position i and the essence on the right from n will be shifted by one. And now this is a, the only rule for a tile with upward arrow. So when we insert it into permutation, such insertion will increase the number of essence by one. And the number, uh, the essence, the set of essence itself will contain all the indices that draw essence on the left, index i, and the indices on the right from a, an a upward arrow will be shifted by one. Just to make it um, fair, let's say that an a downward arrow does not change a number of existing essence of permutations. So for example, uh, this is our basic permutation, initial permutation of length one. 
we have only one tile for a permutation of n1 because it's uh, neither ascent or descent. So uh, extending it to the length two, we have actually three uh, options. We have or tile two, or tile two upward arrow, or two downward arrow. So this is a set of our possible permutations. So we can see here again, these tiles cannot be placed on the, uh, at the last position. Now let's consider the essence. This is an essence of permutation. This is a classical essence. And this is another essence uh, added by our extended tile. So now going to uh, length n, n equal three, we have again three tiles, three possibilities uh, for insertion. And for example, if we will take uh, permutation one, two, and we will insert a uh, three upward arrow, we can insert it at the first place, or we can insert it in the second place. In both cases, it will add an permutation, uh, an essence into our permutation. And if we will consider permutation two upward arrow one, so insertion of three upward arrow will add, a per, uh, will add an essence. So we have here two essence. Here we added three. So this remains the essence because of insertion of the uh, maximal element. And here, if we insert the three downward arrow, it will not change our essence, so it will be still an essence of permutation. Finally, for example, if we had a permutation with downward arrow, so insertion of element three into our permutation will turn this element into essence. Now let's consider some uh, examples of uh, permutations. What will be a legal recursive construction? So if we have such permutation two down, four, three, up, one, so we can say, we can see that the first uh, step, it was one. After that, we insert two down arrow, three upward arrow at the next step. And finally, Four was added, so we can see here. Uh, sorry, uh, let, uh, let me ask a question. Uh, this is very interesting, but uh, basically, you have some rules you made up uh, how to construct recursively a set of generalized permutations. We have also up arrows and down arrows, and so you construct them by insertion rules. Yes, and and you have a a characterization of the resulting permutations independent of the construction? Can you characterize them just by looking at them? Um, so for um, for definition of ascent, for definition of ascent, if, uh, if my purpose is to keep a number in essence, like yeah. uh, in classical permutation that the last position, last index is, uh, cannot be ascent, yeah. then we can, when we, when we should follow this recursive construction. Oh, but, so they're natural, they're forced according yes. to this uh, requirement. Okay, thank you. But uh, at, the, at the same point, if we will consider the possibility for the last position, to be an essence, for example, as it done for cyclic permutations. So we will obtain another construction on those tiles. So at the step three, we inserted this uh, three upward arrow and uh, it increased the number of our essence. So we have now a essence at the second position. And finally, adding of four here turn this element into essence. So I, our essence now one and three, and we have two essence here. And if you consider the permutation two down one, three up four, you can see that at the step of insertion three upward arrow, with respect to our rules, this is a, an illegal construction. 
it's not allowed by our recursive construction. So now, if we will denote by GSA and a set of all the, the such generalized permutations with a sense, and we, we will define by, we will count by NUA number of upward tails, tiles, and by NDA a number of tiles with downward arrow, we can, uh, we can find a genetic function A of NKUD, uh, which will be summation over all permutations, and we will count, uh, you will denote the number the tiles with upward arrow, D the number of the tiles with downward arrow. So this is our combinatorial generating function. And the, actually, our boundary conditions are that um, non zero elements are allowed for also uh, for um, k between zero and n. And here again, k can be zero, no essence, but it cannot be n because we uh, have a, at maximum n minus one essence in our permutations. And it is zero, otherwise, this triangle. So, and in, um, I proved that the, this genetic function satisfies this recurrence relation. The coefficients produced by this recurrence relation were added to the online in encyclopedia of integer sequences. This is uh, the number of the, this sequence, it's triangle. Now, if we will consider these numbers, so we can see here, uh, obviously polynomials with integer, positive integer coefficients as uh, they were obtained by a combinatorial structure, the combinatorial construction. So again, this is the recurrence relation that uh, genetic function A and K U D satisfies. And if we will go back to the, to the um, recursive relation for the generate Eulerian numbers from 1979, we can see here, Actually, if we compare, we can see here k plus one, here minus n minus one lambda, there are those n plus and minus one d. And here, actually, we can see n minus k plus n minus one lambda. And in my construction, we can see n minus k plus n minus one u. So, but actually, if we consider the permutations, we mark by u tiles with upward arrow, and we mark it by d the tiles with downward arrow. But actually, this is the same tile, just rotated by 180 degrees. So if it's, um, we will assign a plus one, plus a lambda to a upward direction and minus lambda to downward direction, we will actually obtain the degenerate Eulerian numbers of carlets. So this uh, recursive uh, combinatorial construction actually generalize, generalizes the degenerate Eulerian numbers of carlets. Now, and this explains the minus signs naturally because you just had two variables and then you just stick in. It's very interesting. Yes, upward and downward plus minus one. So now uh, we had a symmetry relation observed by Carlitz a n and minus k plus one of lambda is just a n k of minus lambda. So now we can translate the is to symmetry relation that a n k u d is just n n minus k minus one. And here we can see the flip between a, a u and d to d and u. You can see it is here. And um, 
we also had uh, properties of the genital area numbers of Carlis that actually the summation over all K for any N will provide us N factorial. So now we can explain it. Marking the upward, uh, uh, upward uh, arrow tiles by plus lambda and the marking downward arrow tiles by minus lambda. So we will actually stay with uh, just regular permutations, which are not containing the arrow tiles. So a number of such tiles is just in factorials, number of permutations of length n. So actually the number of uh, such permutations that is uh, with essence that can be constructed uh, recursively as uh, proposed is given by this product, product of terms like the three K minus two, or it can be actually defined uh, through the unsigned Stirling numbers of the first kind. And these, these numbers, actually appeared in the uh, online, in, online encyclopedia of integer sequences and sequence uh, A016777. Seven, seven, seven. And this is what I would like to present uh, today. Yeah. You yourself, huh? Thank all of yeah. It's a be beautiful commentary interpretation. Too bad Carlis is dead. He would have loved it. Uh, and we have uh, three minutes for formal questions. After that, people are welcome to stay if they wish. Uh, are there other questions? Any questions? I just have a formal comment. Your yes. uh, sequence number is 336633, yes. previous one. Yes. Uh, it would be, it, it looks nice, but it would be even nicer if it's some permutation. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice number. I, I believe it's, yeah, nice. it's nice number, and it has. If, if you put down an up error, you actually have your construction because you have the same. <laughs> same well, I will need to explain it combinatorially. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you answered uh, the question uh, that Carl is raised about the combinatorial interpretation. So yes. Carlis and Scovy left it open, right? So, uh, they uh, actually, is. their works actually, uh, the reason that I presented this, this special work is um, I read it uh, actually already after I found this recurrence relation and this uh, construction. But mm -hmm. it's interesting by, in, again, by introduction, some virtual elements, something that doesn't belong to the original permutation. Mm -hmm. Another question, you, you mentioned the Q before. Can you stick the Q uh, to your new stuff? Um, probably. So sticking the Q will provide a um, will provide some other aspect of statistics on um, combinatorial permutations. The question is um, what aspect, what, uh, what form we would like to generalize. So this construction the, is uh, more complicated than the original degenerative area numbers of carlets. They have the closed form for generating function. This generating function is uh, defined recursively it has a differential equation uh, uh, describing it, but there is no closed form. Uh, yeah. So the method of characteristic doesn't provide you a closed form. You will stay with uh, some integrals in, uh, in powers of exponential functions. Yeah. Ah, interesting. Yes. But in principle, you can put Q right to account for a major, major index, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's possible. So a possible introduction will be, uh, again, on recursive construction itself. So there we can insert the queue and um, provide the something like major index. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Any more questions for Oli? Just a comment. When function doesn't have a closed form, it deserves a name. <laughs> yeah. The, the Oli function. <laughs> Uh, it's also name, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, early function. Like Besson. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? <laughs> well, let's thank Oli again. Thanks so much for a wonderful talk. Uh, and, and see you next week. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good night. Bye, everyone. Thank you.